Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So today we're going to be talking about the GTX 970 and how it was just so damn good. This is a graphics card many of you guys owned. Many of you probably still own it. I actually still have one on hand and I was using it just a couple days ago. It's still fantastic. Even to this day, coming up on its sixth birthday, so next month, this graphics card will be six years old, it is still meeting 2020 games recommended specs. This is something that we've never really seen before in the past. If you go back to 2014 when this game or when this card came out, games at that age were not recommending six-year-old graphics cards before that. So this is a very special graphics card, and we're going to talk about that here today. Another reason why I want to bring this up is we have the next generation Ampere graphics cards set to launch just a couple of days from now, next Tuesday. I will be doing a live stream on this channel. Celso from Cortex will be joining as a guest. So if you are not subscribed to the channel, you should do so now. This way you get notified when we go live. You can watch the event with us and you can go ahead and see our reactions in real time. But for now, on with the video. Alrighty, so when it comes to the GTX 970, what really makes it an anomaly? Well, to start off, we have to talk about price. Going on down here, we can see the launch price of the GTX 970 was $329. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how pricing goes, this is actually significantly less than any X70 class GPU has ever launched at. We're just gonna start with the GTX 670 here. And we can see that came in at $399. The GTX 770, scrolling on down, once again, also $399. The GTX 1070 that came after the 970, this came in at $379. That's the happy price. Taking a look at Nvidia's own slide here, we can see that it clearly launched at $449. So this is a huge gap going from 329 back up to 449 as this is now the highest price a 70 class GPU has ever cost up until this point. Not to be outdone though, Nvidia with the RTX 2070 launched at $499, but as Steve Walton's review over here on TechSpot or you can check him out on Hardware Unboxed. So we scroll on down, the $500 MSRP isn't really quite true because of the $599 FE price. So prices once again shot up rather significantly. So this means the GeForce GTX 970 is the least expensive X70 class GPU ever made outside of the GTX 275. But once again, that was kind of a completely separate thing and we'll touch on that later. So you might be thinking, maybe the performance wasn't as good. Maybe that's why it was so cheap. Well, let's take a look at the performance of the GTX 970 when it launched. Okay, Tech Power Up's got this nice summary review, so we're gonna use these. So starting with the performance at 4K resolution, we'll check out 1440p and 1080p as well. We can see here that the GTX 970, in comparison to the GTX 780 Ti, which the GTX 780 Ti was the previous generation's flagship GPU, which was priced at 699 US dollars. So going on back at 4K, you were getting roughly the same performance now for only $329. That is less than 50%. So that is massive. Taking a look over here at 1440p, we can see the GTX 970 within just a few percentage points. This is the base model, and then obviously this is an MSI model here. To be fair, I would actually go off of the base model instead of the MSI model, even though this is the performance most people got. So we're looking at a 5% difference at 1440p, and then going on down to 1080p, we can see here we have 97 and the 780 Ti is 100. So only 3% difference at the resolution basically everybody with a GTX 970 would have been using. So how does this relate in comparison to other graphics cards in the X70 class? Well, let's take a look at the GTX 1070. Okay, once again, starting off at 4K, in comparison to the 980 Ti, that was actually 12% faster 
at 4K. And then at 1440p, once again, 12% faster. And if you guessed it, at 1080p, the GTX 1070, once again, was 12% faster than the 980 Ti. So the 1070 did have a larger gap above the previous generation's flagship. So this kind of lends some credit to NVIDIA bumping up the price a little bit. However, it still was a pretty big shock going from 329 up to 449. And I made a lot of videos back then about that. It was just too big of a jump in price. If the 970 was 399, then going to 449 would have made more sense. However, the price did drop on the GTX 1070 rather quick. By the Black Friday of that year, they were down below the MSRP. I saw them as low as 329, putting them right in line with the GTX 970. And then, of course, mining craze hit and prices went crazy. So if you were lucky enough to get a 1070 that holiday season for 329, you really hit the nail on the head in terms of price and performance. Now, if you're a fan of the channel or you've been following me for a while, you know the RTX series. I have beat up on this series for a long, long time, and there's good reason for that. And we're going to take a look at the reason for that right now. Not only did prices go up, but the RTX 2070 Founders Edition, relative to the previous generation's flagship, was 7% slower at, this is 1080p, they switched up their charts, at 1440p, we are looking at 10% slower, and then at 4K, we are now looking at 12% slower. So not only did we get a massive price hike, going from even 449, we'll just say that's what the 1070 launched at, 449 up to a FE price of 599 and instead of being 12% faster like the GTX uh, 1070 which okay it had a price hike but you got more performance compared to the previous generation flagship it's 12% slower so that is one of the big reasons why nobody should have ever bought one of these cards the RTX 2000 series was a complete and utter failure in my opinion because of things like this. Now, the Super Cards did fix that a little bit. But regardless, going back to the GTX 970, it's very clear that you were getting top-tier performance from the previous generation, and you were getting it at a lower price than NVIDIA ever sold this class of graphics card for. That's why this was, for a short time, the best-selling graphics card, or most widely used graphics card, according to the Steam Hardware Survey. An X70 class GPU has never hit that point, and will likely never hit that point again in the future, if prices continue to go up. Now here's a chart of all the information that we went on just a little while ago. So, taking a look at this, this is just Looking at the X70 class, like I said, the 275 was a little bit different. It wasn't quite established the way that it was, but I put it on here anyway. But you can see from 249 to 349, that was a pretty big jump. But going from the GTX 275 to the GTX 470, you got 25% more performance. Once again, that is a pretty big price jump. But once we get for, to the GTX 470 to 570, surprisingly, even though they're both Fermi, there was a significant performance gain on these cards. So you actually got a 37% performance gain for the exact same price, 349. Going from the 570 to the 670, 29%, so not quite as good as Fermi to Fermi, oddly enough. But still, not terrible, 29%. $50 price increase, and that gets us to the $399 price point that we've kind of become accustomed to. But you can see as time goes on, the price has increased on this lineup. $670 to $770, this makes more sense because you have Kepler to Kepler. It's kind of what you would expect from the $470 to $570. This is just a side note. But this time around, you got 13%. Somehow they were able to squeeze out 37% there. That's kind of nuts. This right here was more of a refresh, not a big deal. Price is the same, you get a little extra performance. Not the end of the world. Now going from the GTX 770 to the 970, we actually see a massive 43% gain in performance and a price decrease. This is why it's an anomaly. At no other point in time do you pay less money and gain significantly more performance than you ever have on this lineup before it. It's really crazy to see that. 
This is due to competition. Let's be honest, because AMD hit a home run with their Hawaii cards. The R9 290 at 399, that's what it launched at, was still relatively competitive with the GTX 970, even though it drew a lot more power. And same can be said for the RX 390, which is basically the same thing as the R9 290. All right, so then when we go from the GTX 970 up to the GTX 1070, we see a 47% increase in performance. So it's even better than going from the 770 to the 970. So we got a bigger performance gain, but that came with a pretty big price hike. I guess you could say this is more of a price correction. It looked as though it might be about time for the X70 class to go up a little bit in price if we look at this chart. It's every couple of generations, it goes up about 50 bucks, which I think that's fair if you think about every four years, maybe every three generations, price goes up $50. I don't think that that's too crazy or too unreasonable. It's just because the 970 was so cheap, it made it feel like a much larger jump. And that's really a big reason why I harped on it a lot back in the day. I was just trying to keep prices suppressed as much as possible, you know, get you guys on board with that. That didn't really work out. As we can see here, going from the GTX 1070 to the RTX 2070, we only get a 37% performance increase. Remember, we see that all the way back here with no price increase, and it's obviously significantly worse than these two generational jumps. So we go from 449, we'll go on the high side, but that's all the way up to $599, a $150 bump. Significantly higher than anything we've ever seen in this class. Even higher than what we saw from the 275 to the 470, which I guess you could say this isn't quite an X70 class. It's an X75. It's a little strange. That whole generation was overpriced and just had some weird issues. But realistically, ever since we've had a clear X70 class, this is the largest price jump by far. And to top it off, we do not have the performance gain to really get us there. For those that are wondering, the RTX 2070 Super is 11% faster than this, bringing it up to 48%, which is right in line here. And that card did cost and does cost $499. I believe that card would have been fine if that was the RTX 2070 from the jump, 48% faster than the 1070. 499, it's a bitter pill to swallow because it's another price hike right after another price hike. That's obviously not ideal, but I think the performance gains would have been worth it. The RTX 2070 that they peddled back in 2018, that was a complete failure and it was just really bad, especially when you break it down on a chart like this. But it really shows how unbelievable the GTX 970 really is compared to everything else. It is highly unlikely we will ever see a 43% performance gain with a 20% price reduction ever again. So it's pretty clear to see that the GTX 970 is a very special card in the entire X70 lineup. Outside of maybe the 275, which as I mentioned, not really an X70 card, this is the only time we ever saw a performance increase and a price decrease. This is very much unlikely to ever happen again. Obviously, that was due to the fact that AMD with their Hawaii or R9 290 was super, super competitive and shows when push comes to shove, Nvidia is not unwilling to take their gloves off and really fight hand to hand when they have to. So with this upcoming generation, this is going to be pretty interesting. We do believe that AMD's RDNA 2 graphics cards should compete very well with NVIDIA's RTX 3000 series. How this is going to turn out, we'll find out soon enough for sure. But I think realistically for the X70 class, like I said, many of you guys are probably going to be interested in that card as an upgrade, a realistic sort of point to stick to on this would be something like 40% performance improvement, but I don't think prices will go down, not this time around. Hopefully they get rid of the Founders Edition nonsense. I would like to see the 3070, like I said, about 40% faster than the 2070 Super, by the way, not the regular 2070, the 2070 Super, and I would like to see it around that $499 price point. Now, knowing NVIDIA, they're going to try to push the envelope even further in terms of price. 
So in reality, I would still probably be okay with it around 549. But it's pretty clear that we're not going to see something like the GTX 970 here again. But I'm really interested to hear your guys' thoughts. Do you still have a GTX 970? Did you have one? Did you really like it? Did it do what you want? Does it still do what you want? I'm interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below on that. And then are you guys interested in the RTX 3070? Is that kind of the class GPU you're looking for? If it's 40% faster than a RTX 2070 Super at about $500, would you consider that pretty good? Looking at the chart, to me, it makes sense that that would be kind of the price to performance gains that we should expect. Do you think it'll be less? If it's much less, will you still buy it? I'm really interested to hear your guys' thoughts on that stuff. So once again, leave comments in the comment section below on that. And the best comment I will feature on the live stream coming up this Tuesday, September 1st. We will be starting at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I look forward to seeing you guys there for that. But that's really all I have for today, and I will catch you guys on the live stream.